Hello everyone, Little Wolf here. Welcome to week 6 of the Chaos Report, the weekly or bi-weekly Path of Exile series that will focus on the economy of the Soft Cool Challenge League. This week, I'll be taking a look at the changes in the currency prices, a unique item watch list, and I'll be covering a new interesting way to farm for the Headhunter Unique Belt that has recently seen a surge in popularity. As always, do keep in mind that these are educated guesses or predictions, and as such they might not be entirely accurate. Furthermore, I might miss a thing or two that seem obvious to many, and for that I apologize, it's hard to cover everything after all. In conclusion, invest at your own risk. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's jump right in. As our first segment, we'll be taking a quick peek at some of the most interesting currencies that you should keep an eye on for this following week. Of course, as per usual, XO prices are up first. Over this past week, the exalted oil prices have reached their peak at 173 chaos and have since started to drop a tiny bit, down to 170 chaos and have remained steady there for a few days. This is a common occurrence for exalted oil prices in every league, as they always seem to have a sudden surge with a flat top bomb to about 170 chaos just a few weeks before the bot ban wave comes in. As such, it is likely that exalted orbs might drop in price fairly soon as GGG usually does a bot ban wave around the middle of the league, which is fast approaching. Especially with the ease of acquiring currency this league, for bots and players alike, the bot ban would potentially have a large impact on the economy, especially in terms of chaos and exalted orb influx and availability. As a consequence, please be aware of the potential incoming crash and consider either converting the exalted orbs to other items, such as inspired learnings, divination cards, or straight up raw chaos. If there is no crash due to the ban wave in a few weeks, you won't lose much. However, if there is one and you're still sitting on hundreds of exalted orbs, you could easily lose a ton of currency as a result. On the other hand, we'll take a quick glance at currency that did continue its ridiculous price rise, the alteration orbs. In the past week, it's risen farther from its already unprecedented 4.5 alts per chaos to an absolutely astonishing 3.5 alts per chaos. And this trend does not seem to be stopping anytime soon. Every week when it looks like alteration orbs can't possibly become more expensive, they do. The high prices have been explained the past few weeks, and all those aspects still apply. However, one thing many players have not considered as well is that glacier farming is causing a huge alteration shortage, as most glacier farmers simply do not pick up items. As such, they don't sell them to vendors to get alteration shards. However, at the same time, the glacier farmers are the ones usually buying up alterations in the tens of thousands from other players and use them for their multi-mod purposes. As such, with a reduced influx and an increased demand, the price will continuously increase. Following that, I would advise, just like last week and the week before, switching up your loot filter a tiny bit to allow T2 jewelry rares to be shown, as they will be the most slot-efficient alteration shard providers. Oftentimes you will not fill up your inventory while you're out and about, and this is the perfect time to pick up these additional items. Doing this will give you about 5-6 to six alteration orbs per map, which can definitely be worthwhile, especially with the high prices now. Taking a look at the Divine Orb, we see a similar picture. The Divine Orb has continued its rather steady increase since the beginning of the league, and still shows no signs of stopping its stellar increase. As more and more currency enters the economy, more players are able to multimod meaning there will be a higher demand for Divine Orbs and thus increasing their price. Additionally, due to the high influx of Chaos without a Chaos Sink, as Glacier Farmers will definitely not be wasting their quote-unquote hard-earned currency on things such as Xanomods. Since last week, the Divine Orbs have seen another price increase, coming from an already ridiculous 17.5 Chaos to over 20 Chaos now. For farming purposes, please refer to last week's episode, as I will not be repeating them here. One last side note, however, with the vine orbs costing upwards of 20 cows, that also means that any and all six linked items should be listed at at least the same amount. Do not list your items below that point, as you can simply sell your six link to a vendor and sell the divine orb to make more money if your six link doesn't sell before that price point. With those currencies covered, let's move on to the unique item watch list, which we refined last week and see how those items have shaken out since then as well as their potential trajectories in the future, of course. Our watch list currently features 8 unique items, but we might add or remove a few during this video as well. First up, as always, our beloved jewels, Tempered Flesh and Transcendent Flesh. 
The Transcendent Flash has followed our predictions from last week rather amicably, as it dropped a tiny bit on Wednesday and then continued its drastic rise. It has since reached absolutely insane levels of 550 Chaos Plus per jewel. There is no end in sight for this one's popularity either. The more players decide to start their Cyclone builds, which are usually either Marauder or du Duelist, the more players will inevitably pick up this jewel for its insane bonuses. The price will likely to continue to increase as a result. The Tempered Flash has also seen a huge rise, more than doubling its price from last week for the very first time in a long while. It is now sitting at around 45 Chaos with a slight indent towards a further rise. Same reminder as the last few weeks, that gets more and more important as the Transcendent Flash continues to rise. If you are diligently running your temples, you might want to pick up a copy of the Tempered Flash as well as the Vial of Transcendence for your T3 Sacrifice rooms. Despite the Vial of Transcendence slowly rising to its current 100 to 110 Chaos price point, you will still be able to make a very nice and easy profit. Both together will run you about 150 Chaos, and you will be able to resell the finished Transcendent Flash for about 550 Chaos, netting you a solid 400 Chaos profit, at minimum. As such, don't skip out on your Alvis, even during your Glacier runs. It takes a few seconds to do and that's a huge profit, it doesn't require you to run super high level maps either. Rislaf's Coil has since last week seen very little changes, however it has dipped over the last few days. Of course, the graph we're looking at only depicts the average price for the belt, and average with Lathis coils aren't something players are, that are interested in it are going to pick up anyway. Near perfectly rolled ones, which are the actual belts people would look at, are still going for a respectable 2.5 to 3 exalt orbs. They have a very low sell volume, but they have been remaining rather steady at this price point for a while now. For high end players that rely on physical damage to kill their enemies, this build is still a prime choice, as it's the highest increase you can find in a belt slot. It is very likely that the near perfectly rolled ones will continue to sustain a rather decent prize like this for quite some time. However, the average belts will likely continue to drop to about 20 chaos and level out around that area I would imagine. As such, caution is advised for whenever you find one of these belts. Make sure to look at the rolls before you vendor or sell it way underpriced. You want to have the highest more multiplier possible, and the lowest less multiplier. Do not forget about this. Moving on to our beloved flask, the Lion's Roar. During its fifth week, the Lion's Roar seems to have finally found its rock bottom. Sitting at around 10c for quite some time now, it seems there is very little hope left for this one. The flask is not really known as one of the rarer ones in the game, and thus it was to be expected that it would drop to such levels after a decent amount of time in the league. As predicted last week, I don't see a resurgence coming for this one in the future either. And due to this, we'll be dropping our beloved Lion's Roar from the watchlist. Of course, I'll keep you up to date if any sudden changes do appear. As is tradition, the Paradoxica is continuing to follow our predictions to the letter. The Paradoxica has risen to its old 150 chaos price point since last week, and might continue to rise in the future as well. For farming advice for this weapon, please refer to the previous episodes. I've covered this weapon quite often at this point. Its fairly stellar rise over the last day could, however, just be a price fix. As the throughput of Paradoxicus isn't the highest in the entire game, it will be fairly easy to price fix the lower end of Paradoxicus. Well rolled Paradoxicus is still going for a very reasonable amount. Similar advice to the Rathasis coil make sure to properly price your item relative to your actual rolled mods. Physical damage and attack speed are the main selling points for this one. As such, physical DPS is probably what you're looking for. However, elemental damage, penetration, and attack speed can also be worthwhile. As for future prices, I would imagine the Paradoxical will continue to stick around the 100 to 150 chaos mark, with a potential slight rise for the next week. It'll likely remain one of the most expensive weapons this entire league. Now, moving on to the Calm's Heart body armor. This beast of a life tank armor has continued to drop over the last week, as we predicted, and has leveled out at about 170 chaos for about a day now. I would still say that farming this item might be worthwhile if you're interested in other offerings from the maps themselves. However, using this as a primary source of income does not seem to be a worthwhile endeavor any longer. I would instead recommend Exalted Orb Divination cards or other more worthwhile 
farming strategies. It'll likely retain a decent amount of value for the near future, as it has done since the Legion launch. I'm not expecting this item to drop below 100 chaos anytime soon. Following that, the Nomad Studded Belt has seen a slight rise over the past few days. It has slowly climbed from its 30 chaos resting point to a respectable 33 chaos. That's about a 10% increase. Not bad for this little belt. This belt is still one of the best main belts for any projectile based physical builds, such as Spectral Shield Throw, Spectral Throw, as well as many Impale based bow builds. We might continue to see a slight rise over time with this item, as more and more players are starting to switch over to bow builds as the league progresses, and players lose the novelty feeling of playing melee, thus returning to the clearly superior projectile builds for farming purposes. The only way to acquire this item is still through the Ground Leader of the North Prophecy, and as such, if you intend to farm this one, you'll have to permaspang prophecies until you hit it. It is a very solid choice for early projectile characters, and could see a similar rise in popularity due to that. However, it has been staying around the 30-33 to 33 chaos mark for over a week now, which leads me to believe it won't see any extremely drastic changes in price anytime soon either. We'll keep an eye on it for a little while longer. Our newest item on the watchlist is the Cinder Swallow Urn, of course. Still sitting on its throne as the most expensive non soul ripper flask, it has been absolutely no changes since last week. It has remained at its 60 chaos price point, and all of the more popular Cinder Swallow mods have also remained roughly the same. For players wanting to obtain this item, the Mastermind in the Immortal Syndicate is still the only way to acquire it. It is probably ill-advised to kill the Mastermind just for it, however. It's more profitable to keep your Syndicate board filled with rivalries, friendships, and the correct characters. I would advise simply buying this flask with your other Syndicate profits for the time being. However, for SSF, this will be your only option to attain it, of course. It does not drop from any other source, including the unique item drops from the Syndicate itself. It can only drop from the Mastermind. For future prices, I would imagine this flask to slowly continue its glacial ascent to higher prices, as its usefulness is only eclipsed by its annoying way of obtaining it. Now, moving on to our third segment for this video, the good old meta-analysis. As is common at this point, we see a similar picture to the last few weeks. The majority of players are still playing Slayer and Trickster at a respective 43% and 18% each. Cyclone is still the most used skill, with a usage stat of 49% of players above level 95, and ED Contagion plus Blight being used by a large percentage of Tricksters. The Deadeye Ascendancy we've covered last week has also continued its slow but steady ascent to the 7% mark. For the first time since Legion start, however, we're also able to observe Blight being bunked off the top 3 list, if we exclude Val Cyclone of course, in favour of Tornado Shot. This is due to last week's mentioned rise in popularity of more projectile focused farming builds that not only bring the range to quickly and efficiently take care of mobs, but also bring the movement speed required to pick up all the items that are dropped by the monsters in any given area. Furthermore. The Headhunter craze also continues with the Deadeye player base, and has risen to an absolutely staggering 60% of all Deadeyes. Despite being the most expensive item in the entire game, so many Deadeyes have acquired it for their build of choice. It's quite unprecedented to say the least. This trend will likely continue in the future as well, whereby Deadeyes will slowly continue to rise, while Tricksters and specifically Blight builds will continue to slowly drop off. I don't see a reason to believe that Cyclone's popularity is going to die at any point in the future, however. People really seem to love this one. As for the Atlas analysis, most of the recommendations from the first few weeks still apply, as the meta hasn't seen any changes whatsoever, and as such I won't be repeating them here. Feel free to check out the first three episodes for that. If you're wondering how to set up the infamous Glacier Farm on the other hand, check out the week 5 episode. I've included a rather in-depth explanation on how to set it up. For this week, I unfortunately have nothing new to report on the Atlas analysis. With the meta and Atlas analysis out of the way, I'll be covering a new farming, or rather, gambling strategy that has started to become more popular in the last recent while. Headhunter Ghosting. The idea behind Headhunter Ghosting is to use the new Sexton mod areas contain an additional tormented grave robber and possessed monsters drop an additional unique item, in addition with multiple specific prophecies, 
to very rapidly chain drop League Limited Uniques. As Headhunter counts as one of those League Limited Uniques, this has proven to be the best way to farm for a Headhunter drop, as you will be able to get 5 to 6 timeless unique items to drop from each map that you run. A quick disclaimer here though, before I get more comments that tell me my recommendations suck. Just because this is the best way to get it to drop, doesn't mean it's a viable strategy for most players. It's similar to buying 20 lottery tickets instead of 1. It does increase your chances, but your chances are overall still very small to win the whole thing. This kind of very specific target farming, especially for something as drop avert as the headhunter, is not recommended. I am simply covering it here because it's an interesting use of game mechanics that might be interesting to some people. The basic setup for this is to find a map with multiple bosses, such as Precinct or City Square, and prepare a few very specific prophecies and sexton mods together. First, you'll need to roll the sexton mod mentioned before that spawns the tormented grave robbers. This sexton mod is available on any sexton level, so white maps would be recommended as a farming target due to the cheaper initial price point and the ability to real roll sexton mods until you get it. Secondly, You'll need to get a Forceful Exorcism Prophecy, which will spawn monsters, usually the bosses of the map, which is why maps such as Precinct or City Square are very good for this, that are already possessed when you enter the map. As such, you will not have to slowly walk behind the spirits and try to move them into the enemies. Furthermore, this prophecy will also cause the tormented spirits to not die when you kill the monster possessed by it, making it possible to chain them into multiple enemies. However, that second part is quite finicky, due to the aforementioned terrible AI of the Tormented League mechanic. A third, optional prophecy can also be obtained and used on the map. This prophecy would be Deadly Twins, which doubles the boss count of the given map at Proxin. As such, you will end up with 6 or more total bosses that you can potentially chain ghosts into, netting you up to 6 plus moderately easy timeless uniques. Using this setup, you should be able to acquire about 4-6 to six timeless uniques per run rather easily. As mentioned earlier, it's the best way to get a headhunter to drop. However, it's not really what most people would call a viable or efficient way. If you are looking for other timeless uniques, with a little bit of a higher drop rate than headhunter or ever, you might be able to find some use in this farming strategy. One thing is for sure, it's definitely an interesting one. These particular interactions between those prophecies and the map bosses can also be used for a more real-use scenario with the Tormented Betrayer Sexton. This one works in a very similar way to the previously mentioned Tormented Grave Robber, in that it spawns additional Tormented Spirits. However, this time around the possessed monsters will drop Polished Scarabs. Polished being, of course, the Tier 2 version of Scarabs. Any and all Scarabs can drop from them, making this a great way of obtaining high-demand Scarabs such as Sulfide, Bestiary or Cartographers as you'll be able to obtain a good half dozen polished scarabs per run. Be aware, however, that this particular sexton mod is not available on white sextons. Only journeyman and master cartographer sextons can roll this mod. The general setup remains the same, aside from that small difference. I have personally used this strategy before during my tier 16 runs, as you will oftentimes get those sexton mods just by normally rolling your sextons, and I can attest to its real life uses. Especially as you'll be ending up rolling over these prophecies one way or another, you might as well just seal them and reuse them when the right sexton gets rolled. I wouldn't recommend necessarily buying these prophecies one by one, or re-rolling yellow or red sextons for this mod specifically, but if you end up getting them together by accident, now you know how to best take advantage of it the given situation. Now, for the last little segment, I always like to give some quick farming and or crafting tips for some lower econ players that are extremely valuable this week. First up, with the knowledge that I'll be appearing like a broken record, farming the delve areas is still extremely profitable, just like every week since the Legion launch. I would recommend the Frozen Hollows as well as the Magmatic Fishers. This is a different recommendation than last week, as Corroded Fossils have lost quite a bit of value since then. The first drops an assortment of serrated and prismatic fossils, the second dropping a large amount of pristine, prismatic and enchanted fossils. These are some of the most common yet high value fossils and as such should be fairly easy to acquire for anybody regardless of depth and luck. Currently, serrated fossils can go for around 30 chaos each, more if sold in bulk. The other fossils you'll be looking for 
have a lower overhead, but are far more common to acquire and can be used to craft further items such as stitch and vices. If you intend to craft those, Pristine Plus Prismatic works absolute wonders on eye level 86 stitch and vice bases. In addition to delving for fossils, one might also consider delving for azurite and resonators. Resonator prices have seen a l quite large increase since last week, as potent chaotic resonators, together with potent alchemical resonators, have seen a price increase to 3.5 and, and 2 chaos respectively. Always remember that you can convert 750 and 500 azurite to each resonator type respectively. Considering that lower depth azurite nodes can give upwards of 3 to 4 thousand azurite each, this is a nice way to, get to gain some extra change during your delves. Another favorite of mine, personally, is to gamble on Precursor's emblems. I personally like to buy the Uzaza's Meadow and Mountain together with the Potembo's Valley. This usually costs me about 25 to 30 chaos and has rarely ever returned less than about 50 to 60 chaos. This is an extremely big gamble to take, however, as they take a long time to sell due to the niche nature, of course, and you may end up with a bad roll. However, with how much roll currency there is in the current league, I would definitely give, recommend giving this a try if you've never done so before. You can also go for other combinations of Precursor's emblems that are even cheaper to combine. I've made about 12 Exalted Orbs off of the 6 or so that I've made so far. I usually keep about 2 or 3 of them in my cell tab until one sells, then I create a new one. It's quite fun to gamble on them, I promise. Lastly, of course, farming Exalted Orb Divination cards such as Abandoned Wealth, The Hoarder and The Saint's Treasure is still a solid choice for anybody that's sick of glaciers. With that segment wrapped up, I would usually go straight to the outro. However, I have some announcements to make beforehand. Firstly, I'll be leaving the country and thus my rendering and streaming machine on the 20th of July and will be returning on the 1st of September. I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to create videos while I'm on vacation. So don't be wondering where the videos are during those six weeks. I'll try to make videos while I'm gone, but I don't know if I'll actually be able to. This is just a heads up. I will, however, be working on my script for a very, and I mean extremely comprehensive, map investment guide. I've already started on it, and I've figured out about nine topics that I want to cover. The first topic is about halfway done, and I'm already at 20 minutes of speaking time. So, yeah, it's uh, gonna be a big one. I'll be releasing that guide once I'm back, in multiple parts for obvious reasons. I hope all of you will stick around for that one, as a lot of work is going into it. The second announcement is that I now have a Patreon. A lot of people have asked me to set one up, as you have enjoyed my videos that much. And so, I did. You can find a link to it in the description down below. Please do keep in mind, however, that the Patreon will never be a requirement and is exclusively for people that want to support me in a monetary way. I'm more than contempt with people simply watching and enjoying my content. Any and all support is highly appreciated. There will also be a short credit section at the end of my videos from now on to thank all of my current Patreons. However, this shouldn't really affect anything. If you have any suggestions for Patreon rewards that you guys would like to see, Please let me know on my Discord's feedback channel, down below this video in the comments, or on my Twitter. I read all of your comments. You can find a link to my Twitter and Discord in the description as well. And then with that last announcement wrapped up, I'll be ending this week's Chaos Report. I hope this video was informative and you learned something from it that you can apply to your own game. Please let me know if I missed anything or you'd have wanted me to talk about anything in specific that I might not have covered. Also, let me know what your personal predictions are going to be for these coming weeks. I always love reading those in the comments. Furthermore, let me know if you'd like to see me cover a particular topic regarding Path of Exile. I'm always willing to explore new video types or add extra segments to this series. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit the, hell, hit the bell thingy, well it might as well be hell, like or dislike the video, and check me out over on twitch.tv slash lonewolf. You can find a link to my stream down below in the description as well. Also, if you would like to support me more, hit me up on Patreon, which you can also find in the description down below, as mentioned earlier. And with that, thanks for watching, and keep farming those exos.